Hi folks, Nathaniel here at Chicago Music Exchange. I'm joined by Daniel Escariza. How's it going, man? Hey, how are you? Can't see you behind the Jaguars here. I know. What's your favorite type of Jaguar? Um, growing up, actually, uh, my family had a Jaguar as a pet. And that oh. was my favorite Jaguar. Was that legal? Probably it was. Not. It was South America, it was Paraguay, and it was technically wild. Yeah. Um, but it would, it started eating our chickens. And, uh, they were got, they were gonna try to get rid of it, and my mom was like, "No, don't don't get rid of it. Yeah. Just give it more chickens." And so we started thing. feeding it, yeah. and it kept showing up, and uh, it became like just a mainstay at, at that farm. It was cool. Jeez, That's yeah. my favorite jaguar. These are amazing jaguars. Yeah, but I have to say that was an that even was, cooler that was jaguar. jaguar. I was yeah. gonna say an XJ220, but I think yours is a little bit better than mine. What are we doing with these? These, these are pretty stunning. So I'm gonna let you tell the story of these. So um, yeah, these, these three are very, very special and we'll go into why they are special in a little bit, but mm -hmm. um, wanted to um, take this opportunity to talk a little bit about jaguars, the guitars, and their history a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then we'll, yeah, we'll talk about why these are so cool. So. One interesting thing about the Jaguar is that um, it's definitely one of the major models, right? That one of the more famous models that Fender put out. Yeah. But one interesting thing about it is that, uh, that makes it stand out, is that it's the only one of their major models that was born in the 60s. Everything else was born in the 50s, okay, yeah, right? Yeah. Telly, 50, 51, 52 depending on which version you're thinking of. Strat, 54. Jazzmaster, 58. Right. Jaguar, 62. Okay. First instrument that was born in the 60s. And one of the reasons why that's so critical to remember, the 50s was an era when guitar music was still growing in yeah. popularity. Right. The 60s, all of a sudden, is when it exploded. Yeah. So these guitars are already a product of that world, right? Um, something really important to keep in mind. And the demand in the 60s was so much greater and so different than the, the, than the demand in the 50s. This guitar, when it came out, um, it, was, um, it was marketed as a, as a faster playing neck, as a, as a comfortable neck. Oh, okay. And one of the things that is so different about this neck compared to, in fact, grab that telly right there. Will do. Yeah. Now, if you look at this neck and you look at that neck. From what, from the same angle? Yeah, it mean? doesn't matter, no. Just right. one of the, what's the first difference that you notice? I'm bad at this stuff. I'm gonna give you a clue, it's that. What, the last fret? Yeah. Okay. There's one more fret than a strap oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or a telly. Right. So, um, in addition to that a last fret that they added, Yeah. Um, they shortened the scale length significantly. So they packed more oh, okay. into a smaller yeah, amount of physical space. Yeah. Which for some people translates to, well, that's faster. There's, you know, the scale length is shorter. There's- You don't have to go as far. Exactly, right. exactly. It's not a coincidence that this scale length is much closer to a Gibson scale length than that. Right. Yeah. So a Gibson player might feel more at home on this neck, whereas a more traditionalist Fender player would feel way more at home on that. Right. When you were playing them, see, good players can play anything and they don't care. Uh, bad players like me are like, oh, I can't play this. <laughs> uh, when you were playing these, how did it feel to you? I mean, they felt good. And there you uh, go. Yeah. I, I didn't, I'll be honest, I didn't take much notice, but yeah. I mean, the, the it's guys who suck who are like, oh, no, I don't know. We make excuses, basically, you know no, what I mean? No. Top of the line, 60s instrument, lots of features, uh, introduced as 
you know, a uh, kind of the, the, the best that you can get. And yet it really did not. I was just going to say, like, were they actually popular in the 60s? Because I, I'm thinking, so when I was a kid, obviously, like, stuff would come on, like, BBC. It'd be, like, Top yeah. of the Pops, Top of the Pops 2, or VH1. It showed, like, bands from the 60s. Right. Off the top of my head, I can't remember seeing a single person playing one of these. It flopped. It kind of did. Right. I mean, the Jazz Master that was introduced in 58, as the name implies, was Fender really trying to go after jazz box, jazz right. guitarists. Yeah. And... It, Although it is a fantastic instrument, it just does not deliver that throaty, mid-rangey, yeah. woody, big acoustic, you know, thing that yeah. that that jazz boxes can deliver, right? Mm. Um, and it also failed at that. Although there were some jazz players that played jazz masters, but yeah. it ended up getting adopted by surf music. It ended up getting right. adopted by bands like the Beach Boys. Yeah. So there were definitely big bands, not jazz big bands, yeah. big bands that ended yeah. up playing these instruments. But by and large, I mean, it, 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 the, the sales of Telecasters and Stratocasters far, far outnumbered yeah. uh, those guitars. Ironically, these guitars became insanely popular after they got discontinued. Right. Which, if you think about it, there's another interesting parallel between that and a Les Paul. I mean, Les Pauls were great guitars, very, very popular, but the burst really got adopted by players who made them famous yeah. after they were discontinued. Yeah. Um, same thing here. I mean, uh, it's crazy to think about this, but punk bands really in the, you know, 80s, um, were the people that really adopted this and brought it to the forefront. Yeah. And we all know, of course, what Nirvana, what Kurt Cobain yeah. did yeah. to, you know, to Jazz Master, uh, sorry, to Jaguars. That being said, though, let's not forget about Tom Verlaine. Let's yeah. not forget about, I mean, there's so many people who really adopted this instrument and, and there were a few reasons for it number one it got discontinued in 75 i think i'm pretty sure it's 75 and uh they they dropped in value dramatically so yeah. if you were a young player right or in a punk band or whatever you didn't have a lot of money you probably couldn't go buy a brand new strap they yeah, were yeah, expensive yeah. certainly couldn't buy a brand new you know um sg or whatever yeah um so you bought a, a Jaguar. It yeah. was a lot cheaper. Yeah. And uh, for people who were more comfortable on that scale length, it was the perfect instrument because it was inexpensive. It's not a bad instrument. It's a good guitar mm. with a lot of features uh, and it was cheap. Yeah. So it took off after CBS discontinued, discontinued it in the mid 70s. <laughs> Let's talk about these guitars right, a little yeah. bit now. So what makes these three special is that, uh, I mean, as if they weren't special enough already, yeah. they all belong to our good friend, Josh Klinghoffer, mm -hmm. who is a phenomenal, phenomenal guitarist yeah. um, and has played and toured with some major bands, also a great producer. Um, and obviously he's played with Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, for a long time, and he played, uh, and in fact is actively, I think, playing He's with, Pearl, uh, Pearl Jam? with Pearl Jam. Yeah, but even his own stuff, the the Plurilone stuff, like exactly, stuff yeah, 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 exactly. He decided to part with them because he he has a lot of guitars. Yeah. yeah. Um, and although these are fantastic Jaguars, he still has some fantastic Jaguars. <laughs> so it's yeah, not yeah. like after he sells these, he's going to be out of, you know, out of Jaguars. What's cool about instruments that belong to guys like that mm. is that you know they're going to be good. He's yeah. not just buying things because they're pretty or rare. Yeah. He's a fantastic player, so he's buying things that are great instruments. Yeah, as a tool. Ex as a tool, yeah. exactly. And yeah. that's what these are, and that's they served that purpose. 
on tours or in the studio or yeah. uh, in, in these different contexts that he's used them. Yeah. And um, we have the honor of having them and, uh, and we're selling them a consignment for him. They are all pre-CBS, mm. custom color, and rare custom colors yeah. at that. And we should talk about custom color offenders a little bit. Um, not all custom colors are created equal. Right. Unfortunately, there is no definitive resource that will tell you how many burgundy mists were made a certain year oh, okay. or how many Fiesta Reds or, or, or Sonic Blues. There is no way to know that with certainty that I know of. If anybody out there knows of a resource that I don't know about, please let me know. What I mean by not all custom colors are created equal is, for example, a candy apple red guitar. Beautiful color, but it is a color that Fender, I guess maybe they, they, a lot of people ordered them or they, they just had more of the paint. I really have no idea why, but it candy is a apple. color, candy apple. Yeah. It is a color that was that there's, there's more of them in circulation. Right. So a candy apple red Jaguar is more common than a burgundy mist Jaguar. So right. therefore it's arguable that it's going to be less expensive, less, you know, it's worth less money. Yeah. But it's still worth more than a sunburst because sunburst is the most prevalent, you know, it's yeah. obviously the most common color. Yeah. Just like blonde on a, on a telly oh, or yeah. Esquire is the most common color. Yeah. Yet, if you can find a 50s Sunburst Esquire or Telly, yeah. it's extremely rare. So a couple other interesting little tidbits about the guitar that make it uh, different and kind of historically interesting and important is that this is the first model um, <clears throat> to use the transitional logo. Now this okay. logo, before this logo, uh, Fender was using its famous spaghetti logo. Yeah. So it was using the spaghetti logo, which is a much finer yeah. line, smaller, you know, looking logo. And what people realized pretty early on, especially people in marketing, yeah. is that those kinds of things you could not see very well on TV. Think about it, it wasn't high definition. Yeah. So they were starting to make logos bigger. The same thing with amps. The Marshall logo used to be small. Yeah. It became much bigger yeah. when they realized, wait, I can barely see that Marshall logo on TV. Yeah. You know? I can barely see that Fender logo on TV. So yeah, these colors are super rare, very cool. And uh, I happen to have literally just bought this guitar yeah. um, yesterday, which is a great thing because what color do you think that is? Now, you know I'm somewhat colorblind. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I uh, didn't mean to bring that up. <laughs> he loves bringing this up in video. I, I am so sorry. It's orange. No, uh, no, to me that's green. So it is green. It is a shade of green. Yeah. So when you look at this, you might think, ooh, it's surf green, which is one of those super rare colors that I yeah. mentioned. Well, it's not. And <laughs> the reason why I wanted to show you guys this is because this is, I, I find this so fascinating. As lacquer ages, it yellows. Right. When you add yellow on top of blue, it turns green. Okay. This guitar, when it left the factory, was this color. No, it wasn't. Yeah. This is also really? a sonic blue Jaguar. Okay, no. And the only, way <laughs> the only way to know <laughs> that, by the way, is to take off... Um, oh, like the scratch plate and stuff. And exactly. See when you look under where the, the lacquer was not exposed yeah. to the elements, you can see, usually you can see the original color. That's bizarre, um, isn't it? It's crazy. And this guitar underneath, it's tan lines are all blue. I mean, it looks like that. Yeah, that's crazy. Very, very cool. But while I have this out, I wanted to showcase a couple different. So this is a transitional guitar. It has a 64, a December 64 neck date. So as late in 64 as you can get. Yeah. 65 serial number. So it is already a 65 guitar. Okay. And if you look at this guitar, one of the biggest things that jumps out is that these guards, these are green guards, or you can really see it on the red one. And this is a white guard. Yeah. Right, that's one of the big changes that happened in the transition. Another thing, look at these dots, they're normal kind yeah. of white dots. These oh, are all yeah. clay dots. Yeah. 
So it's really cool to be able to see. But if you look, already the transition logo. Whereas if you look at other strats and tellies of this era, mm. they still had the older logo. So they introduced this logo early on yeah. with, with, the, with the Jaguar. Another cool thing about these guitars is the pickups were very different. Well, all pickups are just wire or coil around a yeah. magnet of some kind, but they have these weird enclosures, metal, um, like, They're like teeth. Or, uh, they look like teeth, yeah. like serrated teeth, right? So that's a little kind of like a Faraday cage, a cage around the pickup to focus the, the magnetism aimed at the strings at the string. right. and to try to keep RF interference out. It, yeah. it, it was a little cage to try to avoid as much hum as possible because yeah. it was such a thing with single coil mm -hmm. pickups. Yeah. But yeah, it's just kind of fun to be able to show that this is a sonic blue. That's crazy. Yeah. And some of the key differences, the, the, the difference in the, the guard color, the difference in the, uh, yeah, and the, the dots, which that's a big deal. The, that is dots. more, it's very indicative of a certain era. Yeah. And this is already indicative of a different era. Yeah. And because of that, this guitar, well, first of all, it wasn't owned and played and toured by, obviously, Josh, but on top of that, it's just, it's a different era guitar, so this yeah. is significantly less expensive. its popularity uh, grew in the 80s, right? And yeah. uh, of course, once, especially once uh, Fender production moved to Japan for a little while and then they started making more and more guitars in Japan, they reissued the Jazzmaster. Yeah. And there's some fantastic Japanese versions of these guitars, yeah. uh, especially from the 90s and whatnot. Um, it took off again and then of course, Fender started making them again, and they, and in fact, right now is a good time to cut to some of the things that you can create at the uh, custom Fender shop. Custom Shop. I mean, yeah. if you want a hot pink Jaguar with a built-in fuzz, no way, they'd never be able to do something like that. <laughs> I've just been doing a video with Daniel Escariza about vintage Jaguars. I'm now joined by Daniel Albert and we're talking about new Jaguars. Here and this are. is uh, pretty special. Yeah, yeah. So this is um, the most recent of the Levi Perry master builds that we got. And um, it's a very subtle guitar, as you can tell. Um, there's not a lot visually going on yeah. here. Um, it doesn't jump out. Does no, it? no. We, I mean, honestly, like, I, I just want to blend in on stage and yeah. not be hassled. So <laughs> this is kind of perfect for that. Um, we do have uh, Levi, in my opinion, his signature, aside from his amazing relic work and his past uh, working in that particular department of uh, the custom shop, uh, he is doing these awesome circuits, building them into classic guitars. Yeah. So we've got a uh, fuzz type thing, and that is just engaged uh, on this guy here. We've got our volume and our grit. And then actually instead of the strangle switch here, another kind of misunderstood and not often used part yeah. of, a, of a vintage Jag, uh, we have an octave okay. uh, switch there. So. Um, this is one of those guitars that I feel like is really pushing this model forward. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a great, uh, a great example of what you can do with yeah. this particular guitar. 
I, I feel like with a lot of these little mods and whatnot and different circuits in here, you can really make the guitar into something that's incredibly useful yeah. no matter where your settings are. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we've been doing a lot of like custom color Squire Jaguars. Um, so, I mean, that's a price point. Like if you want to mess around with a rubber yeah. bridge or um, even something as simple as trying flat wounds for the yeah, first yeah. time. Kind of experiment um, yourself on a, yeah, yeah, yeah I like yeah. that. Or uh, if, if you want to get crazy, get in there with a soldering iron and try to get some effects in there. Why not? Um, yeah, we're certainly going to keep rolling with custom colors on yeah. those as well. That's cool so. to have that option as well. Yeah, you can do all, all price points yeah. basically. I mean, you sweet. were talking with Daniel about some, yeah. some way up there <laughs> They're pretty pricey. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there's uh, uh, an offset for everybody. So we got to get uh, Escariza back in here. Which okay, means, sorry. You've got to move. Okay. I've got to change right. T-shirt. Not okay. on film, though. I won't be doing it on film. Wow. Well, that's a separate <laughs> subscription. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What would your OnlyFans website be called, though? Now, obviously, you mentioned that these are Josh's, you know, uh, incredible guitars, but we've also got a couple of very cool amps. Oh yeah. That used to belong to him as well. Uh, I, I'll admit, I'd never heard of a Fender Quad Revo. I mean, look at the size of that thing. Yeah, it's Obviously amazing. It's enormous. Yeah, we've had a few in the shop. I've never seen one that clean, and I've certainly never had one here that toured with a Red Hot Chili Peppers yeah. all over the world. There's some stickers on here that... Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's Spanish. I don't know from where it's covered up with something. Santiago, I think this is Chile. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something else here with another language. I don't know what that is. Yeah, that's really cool. It's cool to see that. Yeah. And we've also got one of the, well, arguably one of the rarest amps. Oh yeah. In the world, right? Very rare amp, very cool, fantastic history. Um, I know there's, you guys did a video on it, so there's, yeah. I'm, sh I'm sure you'd talk, talk about it quite a bit, but yeah. Uh, not entirely, you know, I can't prove this, but from I've heard from a few resources that less than 200 were ever made, 200, 250, something oh, like really? that. That's very as rare. As long as that? Yeah, yeah. And we had two of them last week. <laughs> two at the same time, which is unreal. I mean, yeah. Literally something that, you know, has been on my bucket list to have here forever. In my 16 years here, we've never had one. And all of a sudden, and we, we get two in one week. Yeah, it's mad that, isn't it? Um, Fantastic amp, just great sounding. I mean, if it's good enough for, you know, early Stones records, it's good enough for you. Yes. Um, and has built-in copycat echo. I mean, super yeah. cool. So, you already know we've got some ridiculously cool stuff here at the moment. I mean, certainly some of the best in my time here. Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy time. We have so much cool gear here right now. I mean, we have... I mean, obviously we have that 59 burst yeah. that we're, uh, we love so much that we're going to put out as many videos as we can with it. You like playing it, so might as well, you know, do more videos with Why it not? Yeah. until somebody buys it. Um, we have, gosh, right now we have a 54 Strat hardtail, super rare, that we definitely will be making a video with that. Um, we have a 53 black guard that looks like it's been through hell and back and it just looks yeah, amazing. One of the best looking tellies yeah. on the planet. God, that's what tellies should look oh, like, you man. know? It's a dream guitar for me, that. Oh. Yeah, and you're gonna love playing it because it sounds and plays amazing yeah. too. Um, what else do we have? Of course, we have a literally giant collection of lefty guitars. As we do, <laughs> why not? Right now we have 
a 68 Strat, a 69 Strat, 270 Strats, 271 Strats, a 72 Strat and a 73 Strat. All came around the same time. And all lightweight, all fairly clean. A couple of them are a little bit more beat up than others. Yeah. Uh, all fairly straight, a couple a little bit more player grade. Um, a 69 Tele that is phenomenal. I mean, just... Oh, I've seen that earlier. Got this thing along with a 66 Strat that is both one owner instruments. Yeah. That these came from the original owner. Yeah, we have a ton of great stuff yeah. happening. So the point is we literally have some of the coolest stuff on the planet at Chicago Music Exchange. So that's I, not bad. I agree. Yeah, it's, it's pretty that's good, Josh. Pre it's, it's a lot of fun, I've got yeah, to say. It really is. And again, thanks for Josh. Yes. Thanks to Josh for uh, letting us uh, have these for a little while and help them find new homes for them because they are yeah. truly, truly, really awesome. And it's, for me on a personal level, it's crazy that you know I get to play these guitars owned by Josh. You know, I'd watch clips of him when I was you know younger, and now here we go. I'm playing his guitar, so that is cool. Pretty awesome. Yeah, so much good stuff. People should probably subscribe to the YouTube channel. And you know, you're not wrong there. You subscribe. See the videos and all that cool stuff. <laughs> Just keep that in. There you go. There we go. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Now, I love the sound of Jaguars. They have that certain sound. For the life of me, I don't know why, I still get confused with these things. There's, so many, there's a lot of great sounds, and maybe it's just me being an idiot, because that, <laughs> that laugh confirms I can be an idiot at times. Thank you. Uh, this sometimes still confuses the hell out of me. And it shouldn't. People are going to moan at me. No, no. Take it easy. I get it, man. It, 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 it's a lot. And when these guitars came out, they were marketed as, you know, these guitars that have all of these features. They yeah. were really going for that. It's, uh, yeah. We have videos that literally cover this. So if you want to know more about it, go to those videos. But really quickly, when you activate this, yeah. it bypasses everything. Right. And it's only the neck pickup and its own volume and, and its tone. Own tone. Yeah. If you turn that off, then it activates this circuitry over here. Mm -hmm. And with this circuitry, you have a master volume and a master tone, an on-off switch for each pickup. Yeah. So all down is all off. So that is Bridge. this pickup on. Yep. That is this pickup on. Yep. That is both pickups on. Yeah. Right? That is no pickups on, right? <laughs> right. So uh, I mean, this last switch. Yeah, what was that? Like? So some people call it the string. It's be, it's its nickname is the strangle switch. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just a low cut, uh, or some people call it a, a mid shift switch or something like that. Yeah. It's just an, another capacitor and 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 resistor. Yeah. Uh, very much. It kind of acts like the tone knob, except instead of being variable, it's a fixed, fixed. filter. Okay. That just cuts lows, yeah. so it it makes it brighter. It has more bite.